Hello everybody and welcome back to the Roddy channel. My name is Colin Bracken and in today's video we're going to be going over potty training. So let's get into it. Fluffy has a different idea. Fluffy said it's cuddle session today because it's raining outside. So these guys are really hyped up. Um, one, because they're stuck inside all day because it's raining and bad weather outside. Two, because they haven't ate yet and it's noon. So we're like four hours past feeding time. So let's get these guys fed up and then we will get right back to the video. Alrighty guys, so we got the food already put in their bowl. So we've got June's bowl here, which is the Yeti Bark Bowl. We've got Kenai, Kenai's bowl here, which is the black. And then we've got Fluffy and Kita's bowl here. So we've got their food additives. We've got a hip and joint supplement for all of them. We've got the salmon oil. And then we have this for Kenai. This is the medication that he's on for his hip. For those of you guys that are returning back to the channel, you know Kenai's current condition. We're gonna give you a little bit of update that here in just a little bit. Um, and then we're going to throw a probiotic in Kenai's as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get those added. We'll get the dogs let in and then we'll feed them up. for a second. Just chill. It'll be alright, just calm down. Fluffy, this one's you. Now we're talking Kina. Kennel. Kennel. Now. Here you go. Alright, well after uh, three and a half minutes of trying to get my dogs to listen, we finally got everybody fed up. So now, let's get into how to potty train your Rottweiler. Alrighty guys, so you need to start with patience and you need to practice consistency. So in their sleep, in their food, in their play schedules, and in their, uh, like, their potty breaks. Everything needs to be consistent when they're puppies because that's how they're gonna learn the best. First thing that you're gonna wanna do, and it might sound like, oh, well, that sounds easy, but don't let them go potty in the house. So starting from the day that you bring your puppy home, teach them where it's okay to go potty and where it's not okay to go potty. So when you have a dog come into the house for the first time, watch them, supervise them. 
Don't get busy, don't go do something else, don't let them go, you know, have an accident in the house and then be upset that they went potty in the house. This is your responsibility. You need to watch them and there's signs that you can look for when they're about to go potty. Watch for behavior change. Anytime that a dog is about to have an accident in the house, they're looking for a spot to rest while they waste. So a dog will smell around. That's the first sign to me that a dog is about to have an accident. They'll walk around and they'll start smelling by walls and doors and baseboards. They're looking for somewhere to go to the bathroom. So that's the first step to look for. Alrighty, so when you guys are letting these guys out on their scheduled potty breaks, you need to make sure that they are using the full time that they have to urinate, waste, anything that they need to do. So a lot of times puppies will run outside and they'll go pee a little bit, but they're not fully done. Their bladder, their bladder is not empty. So you need to make sure that they sit out there for five, 10, even 15 or 20 minutes to make sure that they get everything out. So that way when they come back in the house, they're not gonna finish in five or 10 minutes after you just took them outside because then you're gonna be frustrated wondering, how come you just came back in the house and potted? I just barely took you outside. Well, odds are that they probably weren't done actually going to the restaurant. So now we're gonna talk about one of the most important parts to this whole process. And we already mentioned a little bit of it earlier, but now we're gonna dive into it a little more which is controlling their environment. So what I mean by that is you don't bring a dog into the home and give them free range of the whole entire house. Things that you can do to control the environment are like little puppy gates, you can put up little play pens, you can even use a kennel like we have over here in the corner of our room, but just remember that a kennel is not a babysitter and you can't just put them in the kennel anytime you don't wanna watch them. You need to let them get out, you need to let them run around, you need to get them familiar with the house or you're just always gonna have a dog that doesn't know they can't go potty in the rest of the house. Slowly incorporate this and be patient with it and you can knock this out in about six months. So a couple other ways that you can control the environment is you can close the door off to a small room or even if you're in say an office or a living room, you can set up kind of barriers and boundaries so that they have a smaller area so that you can keep a better eye on them. Another thing that you can do is if you don't have an option of a playpen or a big kennel is you can get like a little six foot or four foot leash that you can you know put around your ankle or you can step on or put on the base of your chair so that way the dog stays close to you and you can keep an eye on it the whole time if you're in a busy situation or even say like a meeting at work. Alright guys just real quick we gotta stop today's video and talk about our sponsor. So for those of you guys that remember, we took Kenai into the vet and he has uh, a lot of arthritis and uh, his torn ACL. We had to change his diet. We have to change his exercise routine. He's not allowed to jump in the bed of the truck anymore. He's not allowed to run and play with the dogs all day anymore. We keep him separate quite a bit. And on top of that, he does take pain medication now. So we have him on what you guys saw us put in his food and it's a half of a pain pill a day, every morning. And we've been rotating that because he's been seeming to do pretty good with all the other supplements. We're gonna be using Viz Biome Vet to kind of proactively take care of his kidney, liver, and stomach and overall health while he's going through the foreseeable future on how long we have to keep him on these pain meds and his diet and all that stuff. Kenai is gonna make it, but let's go ahead and talk about what Viz Biome Vet is real quick. So Viz Biome Vet is the highest potency probiotic on the market for your pets. So I'm sure that some of you guys are familiar with what probiotics do and what they're for, but for those of you guys who don't, I'm just gonna hurry and give you a quick dive into what these are used for. So the microbiome on a dog is super, super important when it comes to the immune system because it makes up about 70% of what happens inside of it. The microbiome takes effect when it comes to things like digesting food, synthesizing essential nutrients from food, treats, anything that the dogs are eating, and prevents invasion from harmful pathogenic bacteria. So speaking of bacteria, the microbiome is made up of over 500 plus good and bad types of bacteria. So Viz Biome is a great option because it has a CFU of 112.5 billion per pill. So you can get as much good bacteria into these guys' immune systems as you possibly can. So there's two ways to feed it. You can either give them directly in the pill, you can uh, mask it with a treat or some type of their favorite food or something, or you can pull the pill apart and you can sprinkle it over their food like you saw us do in the beginning of this video. Yeah, because Kenai is not good if you can med. No, he's not <laughs> at all. You give Kenai a pill and he'll spit it out and push it to the side of the room. But you mix it in with his treats and he'll eat them all day long. 
When it comes to these products, they do need to be refrigerated because they are a live bacteria and they are susceptible to heat and humidity. They can be left out for up to a week. So if you leave them out overnight, you forget to put them back, no problem. So let's talk about just a couple benefits real quick to recap about this biome vet. Alrighty, so this is gonna help support normal inflammatory responses inside the GI tract. It's gonna help reduce any loose stools while switching diets or types of food. It's gonna help maintain a proper gut flora. It's gonna really help promote normal kidney function. And last but not least, it's gonna help with some of those gassy stomachs that Rottweilers are known to have. So you can get this online or from your local vet. Alrighty guys, so that wraps it up for today's sponsorship. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, so how often should you be letting your puppy out? Every 30 minutes, I believe, is a good amount of time to start off by letting your eight to 12 week old puppy outside. Now, I understand not everyone can be home every 30 minutes of the day, we all have jobs. The exceptions of that schedule are for work and for nighttime routine. So at night, you're gonna have to let them out. I think it was like every one to two hours for the first month that we had to let them out. But then after that, it became three and four hours and then five and six hours. And now we can leave them in the house like eight to 10, even 11 hours and they won't have an accident. So really, Pick a schedule that works for you and you may have to adjust that a little bit. Maybe your puppies has a little smaller bladder at first and you need to adjust that to every 20 minutes or every 15 minutes. So start with 30 minutes and adjust if you need to. Real quick, I wanna talk about puppy pads because I know that's gonna get asked and here's my opinion on it. We don't use them personally in our house and there's one reason for that. Uh, well, actually there's two reasons for that. One reason being that we don't like to train the dogs that it's okay to go potty in the house anywhere. Doesn't matter if it's on something else or not, because then if the potty pad's gone, well, what do they do? They, instead of holding it, they, I believe, would go potty where either they expect there to be a potty pad or something else that is looking like a potty pad, like a pillow on the ground, or like even how we have a bed over here, maybe they would potty on their bed, something like that. The second reason why we don't use potty training pads is because we personally have a doggy door. So right outside the room of our bedroom is the stairway that then goes down to the outside door or there's a gate that goes into the rest of our house. So we keep the gate closed so the dogs don't have free range to the house. They can go straight from our room through the hallway and out the doggy door. So instead of putting a potty training pad there, we just have a doggy door and a double fenced in backyard. So that's why they wouldn't really make sense for us because the dogs have access to go outside, which takes me to my next potty training tip, which is get yourself a doggy door. Doggy doors are a great option if you guys have a fenced in yard to let your pets really have free range whenever they need to go outside. So this is perfect for any time that they need to maybe take a potty break, get some energy out, um, which is part of the tips, or two of the big four tips that we talked about in the beginning of this video. So if you can, really think about getting a dog door. Sam brought up a good point. Something that I should mention is they do have all types of doggy doors and not just like cheap flimsy ones. Uh, Ours is actually a double wall liner doggy door and it has a hard plastic, what would you call it, a cover? A uh, it, it's, like a, it's like a door pretty much. And you close it over the doggy door so you can keep it closed on days like today where it's raining out and muddy outside. We don't want the dogs in and out. So we keep them inside for like six to eight hours, let them outside, they go to the bathroom, they come back inside and hang out with us. So I talked a little bit about a kennel and how you can use that as part of your training process. If you guys wanna see more on how to use a kennel, I will put the video link right here so you guys can check out our full video on how to kennel train your Rottweiler puppy. One tip that I do wanna mention that's really important to potty training and using your kennel for nighttime situations and going to work is preparing your puppy to be in the kennel. For example, every time you went on a road trip as a little kid, your parents said, make sure to use the bathroom before we leave because we're not stopping. They would pretty much tell us like, hey, you need to use the bathroom before we go so you don't hop in the car and five minutes into the drive say, hey, I need to use the bathroom. It's like, we just were at one. So what we'll do is we'll let the dogs out, we'll get them exercise, we'll get them playtime, we'll get them fed, and then we'll put them in their kennel and we're gonna take away free range to excess water. Now, notice how I said excess water. You don't wanna take away all water from them and leave them dry for the full time you're at work, 
but you don't want to leave in a full gallon of water because they're going to be sitting in their board and they're going to start to drink more water which then creates their bladder to become more full which creates to an accident in your kennel which is a failure on us so no excess water so say you guys have somewhere that your animal needs to go potty for an example uh, not on the cement or sidewalk or patio if you have a backdoor patio and you have concrete or an area where your dog is going potty that you don't want them to be going potty to. So what you have to do with that is instead of just opening the door and letting your dog outside to go to the bathroom, you then have to open the door, go outside with them and walk to the area. And when they go potty in the proper area, say grass or dirt areas or anywhere where your dogs are allowed to go to the bathroom, um, you praise that and you tell them good and then you redirect it if you see it in any other area. So if your dog is leaving um, you know, piles of poop by your back door, you can then move those piles of poop, set them somewhere else in the yard and get your dog familiar with replacing where they're going to the bathroom. By doing this, you train them in a routine not to just run out the door and go potty. They run out the door, look for a place to go potty, they remember where they're supposed to go potty, and then they're not doing it by your back door. Let's talk about accidents in the house and what to do when they happen because we know they're gonna happen. If you think you're not gonna have any accidents, well, you're probably dead wrong. But you can really drop down how many accidents you have by following all these tips that we've mentioned in this video. All right, you guys, we just wanted to interrupt you real quick and remind you if you're not following us on TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook to do so right now. Let's get back to the video. Remember when your pets have an accident inside the house, these few things. One, getting frustrated with a dog about something that happened more than like five seconds ago does no good. Yelling at your dog for pottying in the house does no good because then they think every time you yell that they're getting mad at them, they did something wrong, they start to really get anxiety, um, and it really can just scare them and kind of break that bond and relationship that you and the as a leader and the dog have. Animal potties inside the house, we're gonna get June's attention, we're gonna clean it up, we're gonna take him outside. As soon as he's finished, or as soon as he does it again, we're gonna praise, that's the redirect, the coach, and then we'll bring him back in the house. All right, so another thing to remember if there's an accident in the house is remember that you failed to stay consistent and you didn't set these guys up for success. So take a little bit of the responsibility, learn what you did so you can fix it for next time. All right, you guys, so please remember the biggest thing behind all of this and everything that we've talked about today in training a Roddy is always to be a calm, consistent leader. That's what these guys need. Always try and train with the same verbiage. Always try and use very consistent trainings, scheduled trainings, and always, always remember that love and teaching is gonna get these guys way farther than punishing them or being upset that they had an accident in the house. It will get better. Again, plan for about six months of training because that's how long it's gonna take them to build up that bladder, get their full size, and be able to hold it for a good eight to 10 hours. All right, guys, the last thing that I wanna talk about is making sure that your dogs have a healthy diet and plenty of access to clean, clean, fresh water. That is very, very important in their overall health, making sure they have a good diet, they're not getting food that's full of just a bunch of junk and fillers, making sure that they have fresh water all the time, and plenty of exercise. And that is really all that you need to know for potty training your Rottweiler. All right, guys, so if you follow all these tips and tricks today and something's still not working out or you're having really excessive accidents inside the household, be sure to consult with a local vet and make sure that your dog doesn't have a UTI or a bladder infection of some type. So again, if you guys enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit like, don't forget to hit subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out. Is that a good video, June? Did you like that one? It is bored. Did you like that one, Kenai? I think that's a yes. <laughs> if you liked it, shake on it. No, he's gonna fall. Shake on it. <laughs>